Passive income is one of the top ways to unlock a life of financial freedom. After all, as the saying goes, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. But how can you do this? Well, usually with compound interest. After all, Einstein said that a compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it, and he who doesn't pays it. And the good news is there's all kinds of ways to make passive income with crypto that aren't available anywhere else that you can compound your gains over time. And in this video, I'm going to explain some of the top ways to do that in crypto in 2025 and beyond. I'm going to explain everything you need to know in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works with this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey. I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below. And as the saying goes, it always takes money to make money, especially when you're talking about compounding interest. And if you want to see how to increase your income, then the absolute best way to do that is to become a blockchain developer. And I can show you how to do that from step-by-step -step from start to finish over at dappydiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. But before I do, I always have to issue this obligatory disclaimer. You know, I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing I'm saying in this video is designed to be construed as financial advice. This is for educational purposes. And there's always risks when you're taking your crypto and putting it to use to earn passive income. I'll try to do my best to clearly explain those risks in this video. But let's start off with some basics about how passive income works in crypto. So in general, it's going to come from what's called yield, okay? And you're typically going to see this expressed in terms of annual percentage yield or APY. So as just as a quick illustration, if you've ever used a bank before, like got a checking account or savings account, you can typically expect to earn somewhere between 1 and 5% in APY, annual percentage yield. So basically, if you have $1,000 in an account and it pays you 1% to 5% interest, then you're going to earn 10 to $50 per year just for holding your money there. Now, in crypto, things can start to get really crazy really fast, okay? And you can start to see, you know, yields anywhere from 5% all the way to, you know, thousands, maybe even tens of thousands in percent. So why is that? Well, let's explain some quick general principles before we dive into these ways. So the first principle is risk versus reward, okay? Anytime you see a very high yield in crypto, there's typically going to be some type of risk involved, okay? So what could these risks be? Well, if the strategy requires that you hold a brand new cryptocurrency that was issued within the past few days, weeks, or months, then that cryptocurrency could be highly volatile, meaning that it could potentially go to zero if it loses all its value. And then your principal, aka the amount of money that you deposited, could also dwindle in value towards zero. Not to mention the fact that if you're depositing into a brand new application, okay, there's always risks when you're depositing into a new app that has not stood the test of time. This app could get hacked, it could collapse, meaning that it's risky to use that application and that's being reflected in these high APYs. And finally, when you have these really high APYs, sometimes you're earning a brand new token that's deflationary. Basically, it's printed out of thin air. And so the actual yield that you're getting is much lower than the advertised APY. Sometimes it cancels itself out to zero or potentially even negative. So that's the first principle you have to understand is risk versus reward. Anytime you see a lower APY, the risk is probably reflected inside of there. And any time you have a really high APY, the same is also true. Going back to your bank example, one of the reasons that, you know, you have relatively low interest rates in your bank account is it's mostly safe. Okay, it's very unlikely that you're going to lose the money that's inside the bank, and therefore you can expect very conservative APYs. Now, obviously, I realize it's got to do with the monetary policy behind the scenes, but but that's the general idea. And so, when you're evaluating these different opportunities in crypto, you have to start with that framework in mind. So, with that being said, let's jump into the different ways to do this. All right, so way number one is with crypto lending platforms. Okay, I'm going to mention this one first because it's really the simplest. It's kind of the easiest to understand, and you're typically going to find very conservative. APYs on these types of platforms, okay? So these basically are blockchain-based applications that work kind of like a bank. You can deposit money into them and earn APY, and you can also turn around and borrow money on the other side and pay interest for that as well. So you can see an example like Moonwell on my screen here. There's lots of different decentralized um, lending markets out there. Like Aave is one of the original ones, but I've chosen this one. It runs some of the base blockchain just to show you what you can do. 
So basically, in order to do this, you know, you can take a stable coin, a cryptocurrency whose price, you know, doesn't change. It's pegged to the U.S. dollar. All right. And you can earn pretty substantial APYs on this compared to a bank. All right. So basically, if you just took a stable coin like USDC and deposit it in this application, you can currently earn about 15% APY. Now, these APYs do go up and down and they're very dependent on what the market is. So right now, you know, crypto is in a bull market. There's an indication that this means there's demand to borrow crypto on the other side. People can do things like leverage, trading, et cetera, et cetera. These tend to go up in bull markets and somewhat down in bear markets. So your actual yield, you're going to have to average out over time. You can always click through to each market and see what the yield has done over time and calculate some type of average based on that. So how can you use this? Well, you need a wallet to connect to the blockchain. Again, this runs directly on the blockchain. It's not just like a website, like a centralized exchange. You have to put money into this, like USDC, for example, into your wallet, plus some gas fees on whatever network you're using. This is on the base blockchain, so it requires Ethereum or Ether to pay the gas fees. And then basically you connect your wallet's website, you click a market, all right, you approve the tokens to deposit it, and boom, you just set it in there. It's going to earn the passive income and then you withdraw it whenever you want to. Or if you want to compound your gains, you can always take your rewards out and recompound them back into your principal to really speed things up. Now, what are some pros and cons to this strategy? So the pros are, this is probably one of the easiest strategies. All right, it's truly passive. Once you deposit, you set it and forget it. You come back when you're ready to take the money out. Uh, you only require a single asset to do this, all right? Just one cryptocurrency. You can use stable coins in many cases, so you don't have to worry about the price of your crypto going up and down. And you can also do this with very little funds. You can do it with a dollar, and you can compound these gains over time. Now, what are the risks? Now, there's always risks whenever you're self-custing your crypto and you're using a blockchain. You can be your worst, own worst enemy. You know, you could, for some reason, forget your wallet password, you know, you could send the money to the wrong place. There's, there's lots of risks whenever you're custodying your own crypto. And also on top of that, there's always smart contract risks. You know, basically Moonwell is run by smart contracts. It's been around for a while now. You know, it's proven that it hasn't gone down to date. It's time to record this video, but there's always a chance that it could get exploited and that your funds get compromised in some way. So that's one you have to be aware of. All right. So way number two is what I'm going to call yield farming. All right. And this is somewhat related to crypto lending, but it's a little bit different. Okay. So what is yield farming? Well, basically it's kind of like um, crypto lending, which I made it a minute ago. You basically have a DeFi application inside of there that needs funds, okay? And you deposit funds to help power that DeFi application and you're earning some type of yield on top of that. Now, if yield farming, the big difference is a lot of times you're gonna earn tokens that might be different than the cryptocurrency you're depositing, okay? So something like crypto lending, most of the yield that you're getting, okay, is actually paid back in the same cryptocurrency you deposited. So with USDC, if you hover over this, 10% of that yield is paid back in USDC, all right? Now, there's a little boost on top of that with things like with the well token. I didn't get to that in the previous section, but that's, that's another topic we can explain in a minute. But basically, yield farming, what you're doing is you're often, you know, depositing funds into here, let's say USDC, and then you're earning back a brand new token created by the protocol. Now, that goes back to what I was talking about before, where you might see these crazy APYs, like thousands of percent, because you're getting back a brand new token that's deflationary, okay? They're just issuing these tokens out of thin air, so your yield's gonna be much smaller than that, okay? Now, another part of yield farming is you're often uh, bringing multiple cryptocurrencies to the table. So instead of just depositing a single cryptocurrency like USDC, maybe you're pairing two tokens. Maybe they're brand new tokens. Maybe they're tokens you already hold, but you could put them to use for this type of thing. And so it works a lot like crypto lending with some slight differences. And that's a summary of those. Now, what are some pros and cons of this strategy? So again, the pros are it's basically passive. Like once you put it in there, you sort of set it and forget it. You just withdraw it whenever you're ready to claim your rewards or compound them if you choose to do that. Another benefit is if you are providing this with you know, volatile cryptocurrencies that might even be new, like there is potential for your principal that you're depositing to increase in value, particularly in a bull market. Okay. So the, the, the amount you deposit, it could be increasing in value. And then you're just getting this bonus APY on top of that. Maybe you sell that, maybe you compound it. Okay. So that's one of the big pros. Now that leads me to the cons, which is the inverse is also true. So if you deposit, you know, one or more cryptocurrencies that are volatile, 
you know, if the price goes down, let's say in a bear market or in a dip, then, you know, the amount that you deposited could decrease in value, making you unprofitable with this strategy overall. Maybe over a long period of time, that will work itself out. But in the short term, it could, you know, lead to some losses. Again, the other cons is a lot of times you're going to see deflationary tokens issued to support these high APYs. Um, you know, the new token go down in value. Again, just like with crypto lending, there's always smart contract risks and there's always risks whenever you're self-custodying your own cryptocurrency. All right, so the next way to earn passive income of crypto is with staking, okay? So let me clarify what I mean by staking because that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Sometimes people say anytime you're taking crypto and putting it somewhere and it's earning yield, that that's staking. Well, not really, okay? So crypto lending, you're lending it out. With yield farming, you're, you're trying to farm for yield. Staking actually has to do with proof of stake blockchains. Basically, this is the consensus mechanism that runs the blockchain that financially compensates the people who are actually providing the service of running the blockchain. So for example, Ethereum is a proof of stake blockchain. Basically, you have Ethereum validators that run the network. They take cryptocurrency and lock it up into a computer to help do that. And then they're compensated for this in terms of APY. They actually get yield for doing this. And that's one way that you can earn. So for example, right now with Ethereum, you can earn about 3% APY. It's actually a little bit higher than that when you add in some boosts on top of this. But Ethereum is a very robust proof of stake solution that you can earn for this. Now, now there's some problems with this. If you want to stake a cryptocurrency like Ether, if you're going to do it natively on the network, you have to run a computer that's going to actually run a validator, kind of like a Bitcoin miner, but for staking. And then you have to provide a substantial amount of cryptocurrency to actually do this. At the time to record this video, it's 32 Ether, which is quite a lot of money. And so most people aren't going to be able to do this, but there are some potential workarounds. Okay. So one is with uh, liquid staking tokens and staking pools. So things like uh, Rocket Pool is basically an application that runs in the blockchain where you can stake with a lot less Ether, all right? Or you can even run a Rocket Pool node and then you get back a token that you could also stake somewhere else to increase your yield. There's also centralized exchanges like Coinbase, Kraken, where you could you know, deposit your funds and then they'll stake for you on your behalf. Now, what are some pros and cons of each of these strategies? Again, with something like Rocket Pool, again, there's always gonna be smart contract risk whenever you're doing this. Um, whenever you're giving your funds over to a centralized provider, the old adage is not your keys, not your crypto. There could be a problem with those centralized services where you might have limited access to your funds or they might vanish entirely. Now, that being said, massively established institutions and publicly traded companies like Coinbase, again, not financial advice, but the risk is probably a lot lower, but you also have added risks of operational security if your account got hacked and somebody could clean you out. And so it's not just Ethereum that can do this. There's lots of other uh, you know, proof of stake coins that you could do this with. You do it with Solana and many others as well. But what are the pros and cons? So again, the pros are it's just passive. It's set up and forget it. Um, the cons are it's generally pretty conservative yields. That being said, if you're doing this on an asset that you're bullish on over the course of a very large time frame, that might be okay. You're just getting bonus on top of that that you're holding anyway. The other cons are if you're doing this natively, again, it's a high barrier of entry in terms of technical ability and also the amount. However, in the future, you know, something like Ethereum is actually going to lower this limit down to like one Ether. It's going to take some time to get there, but that could be an option for you in the future. Other cons are if you're doing it with any other type of service, like a centralized staking platform or even, uh, you know, a, a liquid staking token, that there could be smart contract with the liquid staking token and also centralized exchange risk. All right. So the next way is with liquidity providing. So what is that? Well, if you look at any decentralized exchange like Uniswap out there, okay, Basically, it's an application that lets you swap cryptos. You tell it what crypto you have, what crypto you want back, and boom, it spits it out like a vending machine. But how do these applications actually get their money? Well, they come from liquidity providers, basically decentralized people like you or me, maybe even larger institutions who basically take crypto in a wallet and provide it to this platform in hopes of earning passive income, okay? So you can do this. Now, what are, how does it work? Well, basically you take, you make a trading pair for a market, let's say like ETH and USDC. You take both of these things, you put them into a liquidity pool, and then that can earn passive income over time. You just take it out whenever you're ready to take out those rewards. Okay. So what are some pros to this? Well, it's set it and forget it. There's also potential price upside. If you're holding a crypto for the long term, that could, you know, increase in value. But what are the cons? So the cons are the same as other smart contract platforms I mentioned before. I won't repeat those, uh, but you do need multiple assets. There's a thing called a permanent loss where basically uh, if the ratio of the two cryptocurrencies changes over time, uh, then you may not actually be super profitable or maybe not profitable at all 
on this strategy. And that can be kind of bearish, especially in a, in a bear market. But those are some risks you need to understand. All right, so another way to earn passive income is on centralized uh, exchanges. So I talked about staking on centralized exchanges before, but there's also just like passive income. You can just deposit funds into there and they'll pay you APYs. So like Coinbase is an example. Um, there's lots of other exchanges that do this. I just pull up Coinbase because it's a fairly reputable American company. Basically, if you have USDC, the stable coin, like I was talking about before, you can just deposit it into Coinbase and currently earn 4.35% uh, on the platform itself. So if you're just holding funds and you're not deploying them into crypto, then that's a way to earn this as well. It's set it and forget it. You just sign up for an account. Now, what are the pros and cons? Again, passive. You don't need a wallet to do this. You know, if you're scared of going on chain, you can just park in your Coinbase account and earn some passive income this way. It's really easy. Um, it's easier even the first example that I talked about with crypto lending. Now, cons are obviously centralized exchange risk. If there's ever a problem where this you know platform is unoperational for a period of time, you can't withdraw your funds. Or if the platform goes down, then you might lose your funds. We've seen that in the past. Again, I think it's pretty unlikely with something like Coinbase. Again, not financial advice. It's a publicly traded a uh, pretty reputable American company, but it's always a risk that you need to know. Not to mention the fact that there's always risk with stable coins. They could depeg and factor that in as well. All right, so the last way I want to talk about is kind of a bonus way. And this is one of the beauties of becoming a blockchain developer is there's so many ways to use flash loans to make passive income. But I'm going to talk about the truly passive way to do it in this video. So what is a flash loan if you're not familiar? Well, basically, it's a way where you can borrow millions of dollars of cryptocurrency for free as long as you pay it back in the same transaction. And you can do that to like boost your yields whenever you're yield farming. So if you look at something like, you know, USDC on Moonwell, basically you're earning well rewards on top of the USDC that I mentioned before. What you can do is you can supply to this application and turn around and borrow the same asset. And that allows you to use flash loans to increase your exposure in this application and boost your APYs. And you can do this over and over again to actually compound your gains where you can make multiples of what's advertised. Uh, on the screen for doing this. So I've got lots of video on my channel to explain this. I'm not gonna go into it in depth. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We periodically give classes on how to do this. If you wanna learn about it in the future, just watch the channel and we'll make an announcement soon. Not to mention all the other ways you can do this as a blockchain developer, like trading bots, liquidations, and so much more. All right, so that's an overview of some of the top ways to make passive income in crypto in 2025 and beyond. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Are you doing any of these strategies? Did you learn something in this video today? I wanna hear from you. And whenever you're finished leaving your comment, make sure you smash that like button down below and subscribe. And like I was saying at the beginning of this video, you know, it takes money to make money when you're talking about compound interest. And the absolute best way to get the money is to increase your income by becoming a blockchain developer. And so if you want to do that, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos and you want to take the next step or, hey, maybe you want to take a massive shortcut entirely. I can show you how to become a blockchain master step-by-step start -step to finish over at dapuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I felt people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dap University.